Okay, so we're moving on today with chapter 15. We're, every day with chapter 15 is going to feel slightly bit different, simply because we are really focusing on certain pieces each day. Today, we're going to start with problem number one, and the class is going to move towards a focus on what C is asking you. How can I like combine and manipulate these different things to actually use them for something? So for problem number one, uh, what did you get for A? Almost, almost emails, emails per day. Because you want to think about that. Depending upon the context, depending upon the context, that was special. Uh, if I were talking, if I didn't specify per day, 2.95 emails per week, that's like boss. That's, that's no work whatsoever. 2.9 emails per hour sounds kind of more like what I get. <laughs> Every day, explosion. Okay, so this context stuff is so very important. All right. Um, I don't expect you to calculate the standard deviation by hand, but I do expect you to know how to get it. So what is the standard deviation? Emails per day. Thank you. Now, for many of you, this par last part is going to be like, well, duh, of course. If I have 2.95 emails per day and it takes me 10 minutes on average to respond to them. How much time do you think he's going to spend on emails per day? Did you say nine and a half minutes? Okay, I was like, where did the nine and a half minutes come from? Maybe it wasn't as easy. Yes, 29 and a half minutes, or you could even say about 30 minutes. And this is what, per day, this is what we're going to be talking about today. What happens if I want to use these averages and these standard deviations and apply them to certain things? And the interesting thing is, is they combine in not quite so straightforward ways, especially when we're talking about the standard deviation. Please remember, what, how do I go from a standard deviation to a variance? You square it. Because we're going to be relying very closely here today on using the variance to perform calculations, not the standard deviation. Okay, I know it's weird, but that's how the math works out. So again, random variables, which is what we're talking about here, are basically when I know I'm doing an event and I have a set possible range of outcomes for that event, and I can usually ascribe some kind of a probability to each of those events. I can then use that to predict what's going to happen. I still remember, and I thought it was so funny, I took, um, I just, I finished my master's in math and statistics in the spring, which really sucks because, thank you. Thank you. No, because now the county sent out an email yesterday that said, new scholarships awarded for to get DE certified, $7,500 that I will not get. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bit salty about that, you know, I'm just like, no. Because I already did it. Yeah, I finished it in the spring. It starts now. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I remember it was funny because I was taking a stats class at the same time that I was doing this lesson, and my stats test actually had a question. Like, it's so funny once you get like this basic level of statistics, you really are just kind of tweaking it a little bit to apply to different types of situations. So having a good foundation if you're moving on is extremely important. And the question was, it was so cool. They were like talking about getting lost in a um, in a cave. Like it's, there's a this percent chance that you will make the right turn in a cave. How long should we expect people to be lost in this cave? When technically you could be lost forever. Ca always making the wrong turns, right? That happens to some unfortunate people. But it was really cool that you can actually use these methods to answer questions like that. When should we start to worry if somebody hasn't shown up yet? All of that is based off of the idea of statistics. All right, so here what we have, you have three lists of data. X, Y, and Z. I want you to put X into your list 1. I want you to put Y into your list 2 and Z into your list 3.
Remember, please do not delete a list, clear it. If you do accidentally delete it, don't go through and reset your whole calculator. That's a little overkill. Just do stat, setup, editor, enter, enter. Oops. Okay, I'm trying to remember where a really cool thing was. Hang on. All right, so what we're going to do, I want you to go through, and I want you to do your one of our stats for your list one, please. I'm going to show you some really cool things. Well, when we do one of our stats for this, when you only have a list of data, stats, calculate, one of our stats, when I'm only looking at stuff that is in one list, your frequency is just one. Okay? What did I do? What did you... Okay, so sorry. Yeah, it's being annoying. So delete frequency list. There we go. So just delete the frequency list. So what you're going to have here, it's the older calculators that would, would do that. Go calc, one var stats, delete your frequency list, and just hit calculate. So I can grab this set of information, and I can do what is x bar? 10.5 x bar is the same thing as mu, which is the same thing as the expected value of x. We typically use mu if it's talking about the whole population. I know I have everybody. If it's a sample, I use x bar or ex. So that's 10.5. Now, which of these two can I pull from my screen? Standard deviation. Now, these are a little bit different. Previously, what we were talking about last class, <clears throat> we only had something pop up in this line. Remember that this guy up here was blank? If you have something in this line, use it. It is the difference between talking about a whole population and just a sample. So we're going to use S of X to be 3.507. Do you see variance on that screen at all? No. There are a couple of things that you can then do to use variance. You can either just kind of remember that number and then do what to it? Square it. Or what I was looking for, if you go to bars, which is right, that bars right there, you're going to go to statistics. Look at this all of those different things that we had. So I can go to three, and that's going to pull that number out of that table. So I can just square that, and look at how nice that calculation is. So that should be 12.3. Everybody see how I did that? So again, if I go to stats, I'm sorry, not stats, bars, statistics, I mean, you probably won't use it to pull the N out. N is how many things are in your list. The average you can use it for. Standard deviation. I don't, this is talking about the difference between sample and full population. Don't worry about these guys. Okay, but if you want to use average or standard deviation, you can pull it straight from here. I want you guys to go through, and if you are going, if you do have multiple lists here, you can do stat calc, one of our stats, and then just switch which list you have. So I'm going to turn this into list two now. 
and get the same information for each of those pieces. So go ahead and do that. See what you get for each of those. Bless you. Okay, did you guys get those? All right. I want you to compare your answers to mine, please. Are you doing all right with that? It's really nice that the calculator does all the work. We are pretty much getting to the point where our calculator will do most of the math. It's just we got to use our brain for the thinking. All right, now what we're going to do I want you, you can see here the instructions. To calculate, enter the following equations into list four and calculate. So what we do is rather than like actually multiplying everything in list at, in my first list by two, I can go to statistics or my stat, edit, and in list four, I arrow up to list four, and I'm going to put two times, where is my x? List one. And it will do all of that for me. Okay? Then he's like, sweet! And then what you will do is you will calculate the mean, variance, and standard deviation, and you're going to be doing it for each of these different operations. Okay? So go ahead and do that for each of them. Using that list four to create a new list and then do those numbers to it. I'm going to put my answers up here just to see if we're on the same page. Just trying to make sure that we all know how to use our calculators to do this. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's always a big question. Um, this isn't, okay, I don't know if you're in uh, calculus or not, but calculus has very firm rules as to what you always round to, and it's always round to three decimal places. We do not have such firm rules for statistics, 
So what I do is I look at my original data and I say, okay, each of my original data points were all integers. So for the average, I take it one decimal past that. And then for standard deviation, I go two past that. So since these are all integers, I would have rounded my, um, you can actually see here my averages, I all rounded to, except for here, I rounded to um, one decimal, and then the other guys I round to two, depending. But even I wasn't consistent with this, because look at how big some of those numbers are. The bigger the number, the less crazy. And what's really nice is on the AP grading, they like give the number for the teachers to grade out to like 10 decimals. And they don't care if you just truncate it, which means you just literally stop writing numbers, or if you round, as long as you did that correctly, whatever you chose to do. Yes. I know I get crazy sometimes. I had three decimal places, yeah. I'm not even consistent all the time because I don't even remember what I'm talking about. But generally the rule that I like to use for my consistency, and now that we're going through and we're gonna be doing more actual math, you'll start seeing me follow those. Okay, good question, thank you. All right, how are you doing with those? Now, I want to kind of point a few things out here. D was 2 times x. Was the mean 2 times the mean? Y'all okay on that? See what I'm talking about? The mean was just twice the mean. Was the variance twice the variance? No, because 2 times this should have been 24.6. Wait a minute, 24.6. This is what times the variance? That's 4 times the variance. Okay. Is the standard deviation 2 times the standard deviation? Yes. So when all we're talking about a multiplier, the multiplier affects the average. The multiplier squared affects the variance, the multiplier directly affects the standard deviation. Hey, wait a minute, we've talked about this before. If I have a distribution and I times everything by two, I double everybody's score, what does that do to the center? It moves the center, right? What does that do to the spread? It doesn't keep the, the spread the same because I'm, I'm like if I've got like something like this and I times it by two, zero would stay at zero, 10 would go to 20. So the spread would also increase. If all I do is add something to everybody's, everybody gets a five point bonus on the next quiz. Not really. If I do that, what's that gonna do to the average grade? It's gonna bump up the average grade, five points. So if I'm comparing here to here, do you see what that did? It just affected the average, moving it up five. If I take everybody's score, I, have a, I need to get like an overhead normal curve or whatever. If I have an, everybody's score and I gave everybody a five point bump, what is that going to do to the spread? Nothing, because it's just shifting the data. So if you look here, my variance stayed the same my standard deviation stayed the same. Things get a little bit tricky when I start combining multiple things. This is literally just three times the average of Z minus four. Bless you. But if I go over here, if I were to have done, which helps if I turn the calculator on first, three times 48.41, minus four, do I get the same thing for the standard deviation? What did not affect the standard deviation? The minus, the minus does not affect the standard deviation. So if I were to, we already said a multiplier squared affects the variance, so 43.47, if I did that times three, well, that wasn't right because it's supposed to be squared. Ah, it doesn't get the mul it doesn't get the add or subtract. So what we see here are a couple of rules that help us uh, build into this. Where's my point? Here it is. 
So here are our rules about means and variances. Notice I'm not saying means and standard deviations. The rules apply towards variances much easier. Adding or subtracting a constant. That's what we did on E, where we did y plus 5. Adding or subtracting a constant takes your distribution and just shifts your distribution over. That means it is going to affect the mean, but it is not going to affect the standard deviation. These in yellow are things you really want to write down. These are the actual formulas. The expected value of all of my original data, if I were to add or really subtract anything to it, is simply going to say, take the expected value of your original data and add or subtract whatever you wanted to it. However, adding or subtracting absolute every, absolutely everything by the same number is not going to affect your variance. That's what that is saying. And by the way, when we talk about lowercase numbers, lowercase numbers are our constants. So we use lowercase a, b, or c typically. Beginning of the alphabet is set for that. So that's like giving everybody an increase in salary, giving everybody bonus points on a test or quiz. It just shifts everybody's grade. It is the multiplication, and it's always going to be the multiplication. It's going to affect things a little bit differently. If I multiply every single thing by a positive constant, and yes, we're dealing with positive here, that means I'm actually going to multiply the average by that same number. But, and this is huge, it multiplies the variance by the square of that constant. So this is showing you here, expected value of a times x. If I were to multiply every single value in x by a, I can find the expected value, the average, just by saying a times the average of what it was to begin with. However, when I'm talking about variance, and ladies and gentlemen, even though sometimes you're going to be tempted to talk about standard deviation, I'm always going to pull you back to variance. Because if we're always talking about variance, we never have to change our rules. But if we switch back and forth between variance and standard deviations, my rules change a lot. Okay? So if I'm multiplying all of my values for variance, it multiplies the variance by that value squared. Remember, we talked about what these things actually do before. What's really nice is now that we've done those first three units, because we skipped two, now that we've done those first three units, we're actually going to be going back to all of that stuff every single unit from here on out. We'll either be talking about quantitative or categorical data, but we're going to be doing that same stuff. So you still have an opportunity to kind of make sure that we figure this out. And that's why I think as the year goes on, it gets a little bit easier we're seeing the same things over and over again. Do we have that yellow stuff written down? Sweet. Here we go. Now, this is different. This is talking about combining random variables. This would be, for example, if I wanted to calculate your GPA. Those are a combination of random variables. That's a combination of your grade from AP statistics, your grade for whatever your English class, whatever your science class, all of those different grades are each their own random variables because I can't predict what you're going to have for each of them. It's not like saying I'm just going to take this class and times this class by seven because you've got seven classes. That's not how this works. In general, means, oh, whenever you have a mean, the means are nice. They're not mean. Uh -huh, uh, no, 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 no. Means are very nice. It's the expected value. You do what you would expect to to that value. Yeah? Yeah? No. So she's like, uh, comatose. There we go. Uh -huh. So that means if I'm going to be adding or subtracting two different things that are random variables, two different things that I can't predict, all I need to do is add or subtract their relative expected values. This yellow stuff, vara, vara, vara important. 
And if you take a peek at the wall, you will notice that these are not equations that you are given. Okay, the problem with this is only works if we have independent random variables. We cannot do this for any variables that are somewhat associated. Doesn't work as nice as this. So whenever we're doing all of our work, when we're talking about combining multiple random variables, you must ask yourself first, are they independent? Or you could say, because they are independent, I can do this. Now, the variances, not so much. Take a look at that, copy it down. Think about what I've got written up there. Anybody notice something about what I have written up here? It's just plus. That was not a typo. I don't care whether you are adding or subtracting your random variables. I don't care if you're looking for the difference between your AP stats grade and your AP English grade. And we took everybody's grade or, or some class that everybody had in common. I don't care if you're adding them or subtracting them. The variability of it, the spread, is always just going to add. Okay? No matter if it's plus or minus, variation only adds. And what's really hugely important here, this only works with variance. We cannot do this math with standard deviation. So if you're wanting to find the standard deviation, you need to start with the variance, and then how do I go from a variance to a standard deviation? Square root it. That math only works for variance. And actually, it's basically based on the Pythagorean theorem. Because we're talking about overall change. So if one grade goes like this and the other grade goes like this, the overall change can be calculated by the diagonal. Okay? Yay! You've done Pythagorean theorem before! Woohoo! Doesn't change. Okay, but you've got those yellows. You got my yellows? Not yet? Okay. If you've got my yellows, I want you to use those ideas to solve questions. Let's see here. I want you to do three, four, and five. Okay. Three, four, and five on that little worksheet. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Quickly, please. Let me hang on a second. I will have it, and it's actually already posted. So I just, yeah, I wanted to see what format, if it was neater than this. It's a little bit neater than this. So, And after I show it to you, if you decide you still want to take a picture of it, no problem. What's really, really cool about this class, your first quarter grade doesn't really have anything to say about how you're going to do in this class overall. It changes. We are like completely changing focus, plus those ideas that we started off with in first quarter come back, and sometimes seeing them in their uses is easier to understand than stand alone. Absolutely check your answers with each other. Let me 
Let's see, how many kits do I have? 24, 25, 29, 25? Nope. 19, 23. Why is that enriched text format? Understand. Raise your hand if you're done with those. Okay, so there's a couple of you. I'll give you a little bit more time. Let me throw away this pen. <sighs> Keep thinking this pen works, huh? Through 12. Happy, happy Friday, baby. I actually get a three-day weekend, too. But it's felt so long. But I guess it's different because, like, we've actually been here. But it was like, it felt pissed because sometimes, like, no one's like, yesterday was Thursday, so I was like, I have to be ready to go home. And I'm sure you guys were all just really excited on Wednesday when it looked like we might have snow next week. Yeah. And now we've crushed all of your spirits. But it is actually warm morning because it's 22, so it didn't rain really hard. A girl can dream. Girl can dream. Well, last year we did get snow on the 15th and we had two days off. So, mm -hmm. And that was like the earliest that we'd had since like the 1800s. November? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like the first time since I've worked here that I can remember that happening. It was a no school November. Yerp. All right, so let's take a look at the answers for this. When Cameron gets back. Oh, I never did take attendance. Good job, box worker. Huh? 
how is it possible that I've gotten like every name wrong? <laughs> I feel so embarrassed. <laughs> Nope, it's not. Well, I guess it is recording. Okay, so I'm going to hope that we got at least through the first couple so we can see how we're doing. For part A, yeah, there it is. You should see that your expected value is 30. Your standard deviation is 6. You on the right page with that? Julia, that is a weird looking look. What did you get for your standard deviation? Did you take the square root of your variance? Okay, so what did you have for the variance of x? That would be y. The variance of x is 4. For somehow you... Okay. Three squared. Yeah. Three squared times four. Okay. So for B, your expected value, so nice when you get to do what's expected. <laughs> you get 26. Your standard deviation is not affected by an addition. So it's just five. Just five. Now, C, D, and E is when we're now combining random variables. So addition, subtraction, all of that stuff plays a role. So for part C, the expected value is 30. Your standard deviation, so you've got to do the math with the variances, but the standard deviation ends up being about 5.39. How did you do your math for that then? Just walk me through what you... Did you write it down or did you just do it? You didn't square root to find the standard deviation. Okay. Okay. So I thought you said you didn't get it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and sometimes... You, you see a problem that's easy and you're, you overthink it. And that's been one of the biggest issues with this whole class. It's like, <gasps> oh, my God, i got to do more. Right. Good. Okay. For D, your expected values, you do what you expect. It ends up being negative 10, but variances only add. So whether I'm adding or subtracting, for C and D, they have the same, expect, they, the same standard deviation. Okay, and then E kind of goes along with that. Expected value would be 20. Standard deviation would be 2.83. How are we doing with this? Okay, I'm actually going to skip the next slide. And we're going to work on this. Part of what I'm going to ask you guys to do today is going to be to review your normal curve because the only thing that we're going to add on Wednesday when I see you again before your quiz is going to be uh, using this in conjunction with your normal CDF. Yes, ma'am. Quiz on Wednesday. Okay. The curve, the normal curve. Um, I need a check. But it's, we're not actually changing anything with a normal curve. We're just using, hey, this is my mean and my standard deviation. Let's find probabilities. Okay? You are not going to have a snow day on Tuesday. But no matter what, <laughs> whenever we... Steve. Steve is very hopeful. When, whenever we have snow days, it literally will just push back. Everything will get pushed back. And if it says that you're late, don't worry about it. I will go back and change the due dates. Okay. All right. Here we have a mean and standard deviation for a five-day work week. 
Weekends, we have a mean of 450 with a standard deviation of 570. If I wanted to find the mean and standard deviation of his total weekly salaries, how would you calculate just overall his total weekly salaries? Add them, right? So we're talking about his work week plus his weekend. So you're going to find the expected value and standard deviation of the work week plus the weekend. So go ahead and do that. Don't just sit there staring, waiting for it to pop up on the screen. What should he expect to make for the full entire week? One more time. I think you're right. $1,750. dollars Because if you take twelve fifty, oh no, they apparently these people don't know how to add. It's wrong on my screen. I'm sorry. Yes. $1,700. Okay, we can ignore Miss Augsburg now. Uh, what was your standard deviation? 100 and... Okay, so I have 141. So we're all over the place on that. Well, let's just talk about the weekend plus the weekday. Apparently... All we need to understand is that this cannot apparently add because that clearly adds to 1700 For this one, you're going to take the variance, not the standard deviation. So I'm going to have to square 129 and square 57 because we only do math with the variances, not with the standard deviations. Can I look at your calculator? Let me see your calculator. 129 squared, 57 squared, weird, that's just weird, that is just really weird, I think your calculator needs to be recharged, okay. maybe it's just like losing its brain, okay. that is really, really weird, I I'm like, I don't know why you're going to remember her, her, her. all right, Okay, so I'm going to scroll through this. These guys, what the heck is that noise? Oh, I'm like, squeak, squeak, squeak. All right, uh, we're not going to get a chance to get through all this practice, but in your notes, you have some additional practice problems. I just wanted to get to this slide here. Do you, let me just check yours really quick. You just put it away. It's okay, it's okay. So you don't have that. Okay. Wait, no, that's 14. That's 15. All right. In your notes, ladies and gentlemen, you have a review of the normal model. Okay. It's just a basic review. I would like you guys to complete that and try to complete the problems that we didn't get to that are in your notes. Just really with this, it's about practice. The more practice you get and hopefully your calculator doesn't go on the fritz, the better off you are. But I want you to kind of review, when do I use normal CDF? Take a look at your flipbook if you don't remember. When do I use inverse normal? You use normal CDF when you are given the values. If you have the values, you use normal CDF. If you have percents, you use inverse normal. But if I'm trying to find percent and I give you a value, what work has to be shown no matter what? Very nice, Z-score. So it would be a really good idea for you guys to go back and complete that review. Because all we're going to be doing next class is combining 
normal CDF stuff with random variables stuff. Okay? At this point in time, we have all you need, so I would really recommend you use this long weekend to get through the Khan Academy assignment. Some of you have already started, which is great, but we have done everything. The first thing is talking about your probability models, transforming random variables. That's what we were doing today with adding and subtracting, and this kind of just covers everything all together. Okay? Questions? Do you guys love my really stupid math comics that I, I've been throwing up there? <laughs>